How handsome does a penis have to be for a guy to send you a random dick pic and you give him a chance? You know? <laughs> How beautiful does it have to be? What the fuck is up, Constant State of Annoyance Podcast here? I'm fucking pumped in my room, sweating, ready to sweat and flap my beautiful, brushy, brushy, bushy mustache in anger for all of you. I hope you motherfuckers are doing well. Hope you're doing fine. I'm just so glad you're fucking here, dude. Just watching the flap. Watch my beautiful golden mustache that just shines. Is it shining today? I should have applied more wax. I'm going to apply wax to my mustache. It's pretty beautiful, dude. And I put no chemicals. Organic! Vegan! Although it's not vegan because, you know, I'm a messy eater. By the way, before I go into any tangent that I'm about to go in, this is Eric Murillo Colombiano. Listen to that shit, dude. How does that not Want you to move your pelvis in indecent ways, dude. You put that shit in Footloose Town and the town of Footloose, they they will fucking move, bro. They'll fucking wiggle that Christian pelvis around, dude. They will sin that night. They will sin that night. I fucking love house music. I miss I miss parting, dude. I miss parting. But yeah, dude, my fucking mustache is fucking chemical free dude now that i really think about it i'm really happy that i have a beautiful one dude i remember when i started growing it people were were doubting me they were making fun of me because it was like thin and weak i believed in myself man i knew that i had to make a change and this thing just puts all my face together dude it puts all my face together you know my long hair the bushy mustache the sort of kind of beautiful features of my face it just brings it all together man so then all i have is you know, I have like five more years of this look before my hair goes and I, and I decide to either go full bald or I don't know what I'm going to do with it, man. Maybe get a hair transplant. I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't think that's, I don't think that's in, it's not really in my plans. I don't really want that. You know, I don't really want a hair transplant. You know, I don't want to take the follicles of my asshole, you know, and put them on the front. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, I go to some like cheap, you know, dirty Mexican hair transplant or whatever the fuck they are called, you know? And they take the hairs of your back, dude, or the hairs of a pig, of a foreign animal, and they put him on the, on your fucking <laughs> hairline, on your receding hairline. Whatever, man, that's life, dude. You know, if, if things leave, you gotta accept them. You gotta accept when things are over and you have to move the fuck on. But I'm fucking happy about my mustache. I, th I think there's no way that could go wrong, right? There's no way that could go wrong. Unless if I go like so bald, you know, that it starts from like, you know, the receding hairline and then it moves back, you know? And then I get so bald that like even the crown disappears, you know? My neck hairs disappear, dude. Even and and then like the the receding dying follicles do like all these follicles are just giving up on me they're leaving dude and then the little tiny hairs on my neck start dying you know and it crawls back up to my face dude and it finishes it all off dude it crawls back to the beard destroys the beard no more beard that's how bald i will probably get you know destroys the beard mustache one day i wake up it's on the pillow gone all the follicles dead destroyed killed my nose hairs die that would be pretty convenient if i could kill my nose hairs eyelashes die i have to walk around with goggles because you know this is gonna be like by what by when i'm like 35 that like all the hairs of my head just disappear you know without chemo without chemo i'm gonna walk around looking like a chemo patient you know getting that sympathy pussy whenever i walk in a bar <laughs> You know, whenever someone's feeling a little bit charitable, they're drunk and charitable in a bar, dude. That's not a bad look. It's not a bad look. I may consider that, you know, if I go bald, if I really go bald and it just doesn't look good, it's just, you know, I have a weird shaped head. I don't know what the shape of my head is, to be honest. Like without hair, I've always had like a lot of hair. So like if I go bald, I don't know 
the true shape of my hair, to be honest. I mean, with my head. I don't know what it looks like without hair. I don't know if I could pull it out. I really don't know. I really don't know. All I could do is just enjoy the now and try to not think about it. That's all I can fucking do. Live in the now, you know? Live in the now, George. Enjoy your hair while it lasts. That's all I could do. That's all I could truly do, you know? Do I resent my mom for being attracted to a bald person? Some days. <laughs> Some days. Do I resent my mom for being attracted to a bald person? To a bald person. To a bald person that, you know, died of cancer at a pretty early age? Some days. Like, really? Like, these are the genes that you picked? These are the genes that you were like, you know what? If I combine mine with this balding, dying alcoholic, I think we can make a pretty nice baby. I think we can make a pretty healthy and beautiful, you know, baby with a long shelf life. You know what? That's the guy that I want to mix DNA with and pop a live one out of my puss. This is the guy, you know? <laughs> but it is what it is. You don't choose your DNA. It is what it is, you know? But I don't know if I do go bald and I just, I can't pull out the look because I don't want to have the crown. I hate the crown because it looks like a toilet seat. It looks like a toilet seat. I ma I've made fun of people way too much in my head of, you know, of people who have the crown that I can't pull off the crown. My dad had the crown, you know, I don't want, I don't want that. I don't want the crown, dude. If I can't pull off being bald completely, I'm either going to try like a mullet. I'll definitely try like bald mullet, you know, and then you just wear a hat. Or maybe, or maybe like what I've seen people that have like the the little dot, you know, on top of their forehead, you know, the little dot of hair that's still hanging in there for no reason at all, for no apparent reason. It's just hanging in there. They have hat hair. They literally have hat hair because they have like the dot where the little, you know, the little peekaboo um, window of, you know, whatever baseball cap you're wearing backwards, you know, it, it shows a little hair on the top. And then on the back, you have, like, long hair hanging behind your neck. Like, I understand, you know, maybe if, if, if I have the little dot on top, the necessary disgusting dot. Like, how do you walk around, you know, like, everything behind that dot of hair on top of your forehead is just dying, just dying crops, dude. Dead, dead, given up follicles. And you just walk around happily with that weird dot on your head. Just shave it all off, dude. It's over. It's gone. Let go, dude. Let go. Life's about letting go, dude. Learning when and how to let go. And it's hard. I have problems doing it, dude. But sometimes just an era ends, dude. And you just have to move on. But if, if being bald doesn't work out for me, dude, and I don't have that dot on my head where I could just wear, you know, a snapback backwards... And it looks like I have hair. I can lie. I could I could walk around lying. That's one thing. I can't wear a wig. I can't wear a wig. I can't walk ar around lying. Just lying to people, dude. Especially bad wigs when everybody knows. You're lying, but everybody knows. There's nothing worse than a bad liar that doesn't know that they're a bad liar. I mean, sure, like, yeah, the story that they're telling themselves is a different one than what, than how other people perceive them. Which is the only story that matters, you know. That's the only story that matters. The story that you tell yourself on a daily basis. But if it's a dishonest, sad story, dude. You know, and you're lying to yourself and you believe your lies. Or you believe that other people are buying your lies. Which is even sadder, you know. If you're buying your own lies. I think, you know, ignorance is bliss. So good for you. Good for you for not being grounded in this sad, putrid reality. You know, good for you. But there's a lot of people that care too much. There's a lot of people that indulge themselves. They double dip their self-esteem in the story that other people or the story that they think that other people are telling about them. And that's just sick. That's a sick thing to do. That's, that's what wig people do. They're just lying to people, dude. Just accept it. Just take it. Just take it. That Those are the cards that are dealt to you. You just take it. There's nothing else you could do. If hair leaves, it leaves, you know? And of course, I sound all brave and shit on, this, on the podcast, but I'm on a couple of meds. I'm on a couple of meds. I'm on the pill. I'm on that follicle pill, bro. That follicle pill that probably is going to make your dick limp, you know? It's going to make your dick limp. That's why 
I am sending as much dick pics as I possibly can because there may be a day that I probably would not be able to send a dick pic, dude. Like, maybe my dick's gonna be so limp. As long as I have, like, a head full of hair and my dick's not working. As long as I can have, like, a career, you know? And entertain. Because no one wants to hear from, like, a balding person, you know? Like, I need to keep this. I need to keep this, you know? So, you know, I don't care. I don't care. I, I, I would prefer to die alone and have a career and have, like, a head full of hair than having any functional relationship, dude. I'd, I'd rather never be horny ever again, <laughs> you know, just having a limp dick, dude. Just And just going through a life with unstretched underwear, all of my underwear, like, none of the waistbands are ever stretched. Because I think that's how they get stretched, right? Because of, you know, the massive boners that I have, although my dick's not big enough to, you know cause damaging stretch marks on my underwear let's be honest <laughs> it's you know it's it's the washing machine it's the washing machine i know <laughs> speaking of dick pics dude there's this thing there's this trend on social media which i'm pretty happy before i you know because i'm i'm going to go on a semi not a sexist rant but uh, you know if you're sensitive enough it may sound sexist and by the way in this podcast, I've noticed, and I try not to do this. I try not to talk about the same things or, like, you know, just go from the same point of view. I like changing my points of view. I like growing as a person. I, I, I like understanding different points of views. And one thing that I've noticed is that I've, I've, I've been a little, on this podcast lately, I've been a little tough on women. And I've noticed why that's happening. It's because my life has consisted from living, just being in my house, and being in my job. My house, I live with my mom, and my job, I'm surrounded just by women. I'm there's like three guys, or maybe I think now there's like two guys, two guys, four guys. Two of them are gay, so it's like you know, <laughs> and they're not like masculine gay. They're like you know, weak wristed gay people. You know, they're like delicate, effeminate gay people. So it's like, I I I need that testosterone. I indulge in testosterone energy. Not that these people don't have testosterone, but I just need that like that like. We're, we're men, you know, type of energy around me. And I just haven't had that, you know, because I want to shit on men because that type of energy is also bullshit. It's all bullshit if you really, if you really pick everything apart. And that's why I've been a little, you know, I've talked a lot about women because that's what I've been surrounded by. Sadly, that, that my life's been so boring since the pandemic. Plus, I don't have a car and all this shit. Like, look, t- life's been tough. Life's been tough for me these past couple of weeks, you know. And this is, you know, I'm just surrounded by women, you know, and this is a constant state of annoyance podcast. So the things that I surround myself by are the things that I'm going to make fun of. You know what I mean? And I've just, this is, I've just been surrounded by women, you know, in the worst way possible, in the worst way possible, (laughs) you know, that's why the whole deal of like, you know, blowing yourself up for Allah, like I'm pretty sure that the, that the fucking terrorists that caused 9-11 you know they they obviously already went through all the 72 virgins and then what and then what do you do after you go through the 72 virgins then you have to talk with them you have to live with them you know you have to try to get along you're surrounded by 72 women for the rest of of your life, dude. No macho energy, right? They're all talking about their hair. You know, they're all talking about the brand of their, you know, of their Muslim attire. What are those called? I completely forgot, dude. I completely forgot. The opposite of a yarmulke. That's what I'm going to call it. <laughs> no, it's not the opposite of a yarmulke. What are those called? A burqa, you know? They're talking about their you know, the 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 brand of their burqa. Oh, I don't like this brand because it makes my face itchy, you know. 72, went just boring, dude. They have to be bored. They have to fucking hate the rest of, you know, of eternity, dude. They, they killed all those people and now they're bored, dude. <laughs> Ugh. But, um... What was I talking about? I completely forgot. I went on a fucking tangent there. I was talking about dick pics. And there's this trend on social media where if you if you're a creep as a guy, if you're a creep and you send a dick pic just randomly to chicks, chicks will out you. Chicks will out you. Like they like, like there's no more playing around, dude, which is great. Which I applaud. 
which I'm fucking happy about, you know? You can't just send dick pics and expect no recourse. You know, you will be outed, dude. You will be outed. And and there are, like, periods of times, especially on Twitter, where one one chick will, like, start a thread of, oh, these three guys sent dick pics to me out of nowhere. And then there's, like, this whole fucking... There's just this whole... What's that called? A whole thread of just chicks just, like... You know, cleaning out the garbage, cleaning out the, like, random dick pics that appear in their DMs. Just outing, guys. Out, dude. And d- and these, I noticed that these threads on Twitter where chicks are outing guys for sending them random dick pics get a lot of likes and retweets. And they get a lot of eyeballs. That's one thing that I've noticed, and I'm here thinking, like, I'm, I'm trying to get the podcast out to more people, and I need to learn innovative marketing ways where I could just market the podcast without wasting that much money. And one thing that I thought about is, what if, what if I get one of my black friends, right, because I can't do it, but I... I'm going to get one of my black friends to write, follow, listen to a constant State of Annoyance podcast with Sharpie on their cock. Of course, I can't fit, you know, listen to a constant State of Annoyance podcast. It's a very wordy, it's it's an unnecessary wordy title for a podcast, by the way. I resent the name of my podcast now. (laughs) It's super wordy, and I can't fit that on my dick, but if I could fit it on the dick of one of my black friends, just, you know, I'll throw them a couple of bucks. Any of my black friends out there, if you want to throw me a solid, hey, DM me. And I will definitely, you know, create a fake black person account on Tinder and just start, you know, just a beautiful black person start collecting numbers of girls, and just start sending these fucking dick pics. Just start, like a creep, just creepily sending these dick pics out to poor, innocent women. But it's gonna be like a big, you know, fat black cock. So it's it's something. It's not my, you know, it's not a poor excuse of a wee-wee, but it's not the most photographical, it's not the most photogenic penis out there, the one that I have. It's okay. I like my peace. I don't hate my peace. I'm glad that I have an acceptable level of a peace. Because if I had like, dude, if if you if you if I shaved, definitely, dude. If I shaved like a couple centimeters off my dick, dude, and I was going bald, I think, yeah, I would hate myself much more than what I hate myself now. But <laughs> that's com- that's completely honest, dude. But. Definitely, dude. I think I'm I'm guerrilla marketing, dude. I want the name of my podcast on a dick, and I just want to creepily on a fake account send it to girls. So when they start outing that account, this fake person for sending them a dick pic, dude, what's the title that's going to appear? My podcast. My podcast is going to be retweeted. The name. I'm gonna get all those fucking eyeballs people will see and people will be curious what the fuck is this what is this podcast i need to listen to an episode and it's just me a non-black person people scratching their head do like what the fuck's going on and the people who enjoy it will stay but i will get the name of my podcast out there gorilla marketing dude you know and if it works dude i'm going to write a course i'm going to write one of these overpriced courses you know, that constantly appear on YouTube ads, you know, because fuck everybody, fuck you for Googling how to make more money, how to better my life on YouTube, because then you're going to, you're going to get inundated by courses, by ads, dude, on YouTube. Fuck me forever YouTubing forever punching in into that YouTube search bar how to make more money. Thank you, YouTube, for constantly reminding myself anytime I want to forget, anytime I want to just, you know, enjoy a three-minute video on YouTube, some fucking asshole trying to sell me a course and trying to scam me, you know, into buying their dumb courses of things that I could easily Google. Because none of these fucking gurus actually help. They're all full of shit. They're all full of shit. And we know it. And it's sad. It sucks that they're all full of shit, dude. 
really, if you really think about it, like the conclusion that I've, I've, I've made, and I could be wrong. Hey, if I'm wrong, if you figured out a system, dude, and you just want to help, you know, if you want to just point me to the right direction, point me to the right direction. One thing that I've noticed is that most of these courses are bullshit. Most of these courses are are garbage, dude. And most of them are just things that I could easily Google or their logic. Like making money online is just trial and error, dude. Really. It's a grind. Just like anything else. It's a fucking grind. You know? There's no one get rich quick scheme way. There's no easy way to actually make $100 a day online. Like it takes time, dude. It takes time. It takes willpower. You know, and it's boring on top of all. It's just, it's hard. It takes time. These people make it sound so easy, man. And they want you they want you to buy them those $2,000 unnecessarily, you know, expensive courses. Fuck them, dude. Fuck me forever. Wanting to better myself. These fucking fucks. <laughs> but, dude, guerrilla marketing. Dude, if you ever want to get your business out there, Slap the name of your business on a cock. Create a fake account. Start tin- get on Tinder with that fake account. Start collecting phone numbers of women. Start sending these dick pics with the name of your business on that cock. When they start outing you on Twitter for sending them random creepy dick pics, the name of your business is going to be there. Those fucking tweets get a lot of retweets, get a lot of eyeballs, get a lot of likes, and you will you will see, you will definitely see your business just thrive. You're welcome, people. <laughs> I was thinking, I was actually thinking, like, why do people send dick pics? You know, like, what's the real? Because I've had the urge to send it, you know, and there's a thrill. I will become, like, as a guy, I'll be completely honest. I don't do this anymore. I used to do it when I had no game. That's something that people with no game have. They just, like, they go full fuck it, dude. You know, they go full Alu Akbar. Fuck it. That, 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 that is literally an Alu Akbar move, dude. Before, like, pressing the fucking button that's going to ignite the dynamite that's strapped around their chest. You know? It's a complete fucking m- moment. And, and, you know, the success rate of a random dick pic is, like... Close to nothing. It's raining. Can you guys hear the end of recording? I hope not. I fucking hope not. But if you do, whatever. Who cares? But that's a full fucking moment, dude. Because and and there is a thrill to sending a dick pic. There's definitely a thrill. There's this beautiful thrill, dude. Where where, where you're like, oh my god, is she is she gonna tell me to go fuck myself? Is she going to say nice? Is she going to send a singular emoji? Or is she going to send a nude back? Because most nudes, to be honest, if a guy sends you a random dick pic, that's more of an in- invitation of, like, hey, I show you I show you mine, you show me yours. Like, yeah, come on, let's, let's share, you know? Let's share, people. And it's a really vulnerable position to put yourself in if you really think about it. Like, women get angry that men never want to be vulnerable with me. That's a pretty vulnerable thing, you know? I wish people could open themselves up it's such a matter with me. Men don't want to open themselves up to me, you know? Because we're all in this weird, you know, we're all like listening to our testosterone while trying to be tough in front of one another, you know, pecking order shit. It's pecking order shit. We're all trying to act tough. We're all trying to act superior than one another. It is what it is. It's this weird bullshit thing that men do to each other, you know? But it's like sending a dick pic is such a vulnerable move, you know? To just opening themselves up to you like... Here are my genitals. Judge for yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I wonder, I, I honestly wonder, this is an honest question. To all of my, um, to all of my more sexually adventurous listeners out there, to all my sexually adventurous female listeners out there how beautiful or you know as other circles will call you to all them hoes out there um (laughs) when i say hoes it's just i think being a hoe is a beautiful thing because being a hoe is just you not listening to society because i'm not i'm not anti-sex i'm pro-sex dude like just let it out man just let it out of you you know at the end of the day you're going to die 
at the end of the day, you know, the older you get, the less sex you have. Just fucking get your rounds in, dude. Get your number, numbers up and just have fun. Just have fun and just protect yourself. I've, I've always been pro-sex. I've always been pro-sex. On this channel, on this channel, on this podcast, I've always been pro-sex. And I think Ho is just a beautiful compliment, man. Like, good for you for being free and not listening to all the, you know, all the propaganda and all the bullshit and just listening to the masses, dude. Like, and as I said earlier, earlier, as I said earlier, good for you for not listening and, and for not caring about the story that other people are making of you and their minds or of the, of the story that you assume that, that other people are making about you and their minds, because that's all we're doing. We're all just assuming what people think about us. And it doesn't matter because again, number one, you're just assuming, you know, you're basically hypnotizing yourself. And to believe in it, oh, this person's thinking this about me. Like, it doesn't matter. Number one, it doesn't matter what other people think about you. And number two, it's pretty crazy that you're going to filter your actions. You're going to filter your desires. You're going to fucking cut your legs. You're going to cut the things that you're going to do and enjoy in your life because, you know, of what you believe that other people are thinking about you. That's pretty crazy. That's some crazy mental gymnastics over there, man. That's crazy shit. So if you're a hoe, own it. Enjoy it. Fuck it. But my question to all of you hoes out there. <laughs> I just want to use the word ho. It's a nice word. It's short. It gets to the point. And there's the other word that I want to use. You know, the one that we can't say. The one that I use the <laughs> button for. But that's another conversation that I'm not going to have on this podcast. But to all you hoes out there, how beautiful, how handsome does a penis have to be? How handsome does a penis have to be that, you know, you receive a random dick pic and this penis is so handsome that you don't out this guy on Twitter? In fact, you get even more attracted. You get curious. You're like, this penis is, how handsome does a penis have to be for a guy to send you a random dick pic and you give him a chance? You know, (laughs) how beautiful does it have to be? Like, How, number one, how big does it have to be? And number two, how handsome and just like, how, how much vivid colors does it have to have? Does the dick have to have like a healthy tan to it? Does the dick have to have like, it's like circumcised, because let's be honest, uncircumcised penises under a lens don't look good. They don't look good. And I know that all of you uncircumcised, ugly dick having fucks are always saying, oh, but we have more nerve endings than circumcised people. I enjoy sex more than you. Yeah, that's why you come too fast. Yes, I did do an episode talking about, you know, premature ejaculation, but I've, but I also cleared up the air of how my dick works. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Plus, by having less net less nerve endings, and I enjoy sex a lot. Like, yeah, for me, sex is like super stimulating. Like, if I had even more nerve endings, I think I would be a slave, dude. You, you ever see those guys out there that that when they're married, they like tell you know they call their women boss or chief. You know, they bow down to their wife, they're pussy whipped. Do you know why they're pussy whipped? They're pussy whipped because they're uncircumcised. They are slaves to their genitals. Me being circumcised, having less nerve endings, I am not. I can see behind a curtain and I can see beyond the bullshit. (laughs) That's the benefit of circumcising your child. I know it's like child abuse. I know it's super wrong to circumcise your child. But if you really break it down, I'm just not a slave to this thing. Like, yeah, it's I have enough nerve endings where sex is like this beautiful, stimulating experience, but I'm not a slave to it. Like, I could, I could say no to it. I could, <laughs> you know, it's not that great. It's okay. I mean, it's fine. I have a great experience. I have a great time having sex, but I'm not a slave to it. But how beautiful does a dick have to be for, you know, like, like imagine like a, like how beautiful, let me paint the picture. Like it has this like very vivid colors. Not one of these like pale, you know, these pale corpse sticks. Nah, it's like it's circumcised, but you know, the parents of the person that's sending you this handsome random dick pic, you know, their parents paid extra money so, so that when this person will get circumcised, they wouldn't end up with a circumcision scar. 
Like, it's, their penis is so handsome that they don't have a circumcision scar. You know, their fucking urethra naturally is like a little red. You know, it looks like it naturally has like a little lipstick on it. You know, like the balls, their balls are just, they're symmetrical. They're not too big, but not too small. They're not wrinkly. They're just, they're just inviting you to get gargled. Like, does such a penis exist? That's what I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Like, is there like a guy out there or two that have such beautiful genitalia that they could get away by sending a random dick pic to you and you just accepting it? Does that exist? Is that real? Or is it just all around gross? There's just not one single handsome penis out there that will be able to pull off the random dick pic move. I honestly ask. I honestly ask. <laughs> I'm curious, you know, I'm a curious, I'm curious, George. What do you want? What do you want me to do? What I honestly think about guys who send dick pics, who send random dick pics, I think they're repressed nudists. Guys who send random dick pics, they are repressed nudists, dude. You know, it's just like, they just black out, dude. They just black out and they just like send a dick pic and they and they send it to you they don't they don't even remember that they send it to you or maybe like the urge to just to just show off just their naked self is so ginormous that they just they just send it to the first person that they're attracted to you know there are people those the people who send random dick pics there are people who like they trust people too easily and they're repressed nudists, dude. And deep down, they just hate themselves. But whenever they send a dick pic to a random person, because, that, because that's what being a nudist is, being able to be naked in front of random people without it being a big deal. You wanting to just be naked. You wanting to not have clothes. You wanting people to see your nakedness. And being naked is a pretty beautiful thing. You know, being naked is a pretty beautiful thing. If you could just, like, let go, just be naked. Just be a... A full natural human being. I think there's something very beautiful to that. To just being able to let go of this need to just like, you not, don't see. Uh, no, you're seeing the, the, the pelvical device that we're all so deeply ashamed about. You know? Being able to let go of that, I think it's something pretty beautiful to being a nudist. Maybe these people just repressed nudists. You ever thought about women? You ever thought about that women who are outing out guys? Who are sending you random dick pics on the DMs. Maybe they're victims too. Maybe they're victims too. You ever thought about that? Bunch of selfish assholes making their lives more convoluted. All they want to do is just be nudists. They just want to be naked and be free. But they're convoluted inside. They haven't found the realization. They haven't realized that they are nudists, you know? And every day, every day, that every time that they buy themselves new clothes, because they're the type of people that, you know, as we talked in this episode, they're the type of people who care about what other people think about them. So they're constantly buying like, you know, $100 branded jeans, $200 brand jeans, Gucci t-shirts. I don't know how expensive Gucci is. I've never been in a Gucci store. That's how trashy I am. But they buy like Gucci t-shirts, Supreme t-shirts. They buy expensive branded shirts. And the more that more clothes that they buy, the more they hate themselves. And they don't know why. They don't understand why because they constantly care about what other people think about them but deep down there's that repressed voice there's that repressed voice that just wants them to be naked that they just wants them that that, that just wants them to be in the nude a la nude a la naked you know and the only escape that they find that they can explain it themselves is sending you a random dick pic they are victims, you know? The more clothes they buy, the more expensive clothes they buy, the more suicidal they get. You ever thought about that? How about having some compassion before? <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't believe this rant myself. Um, <laughs> why not finding some compassion in your heart instead of making this poor, repressed nudist's life harder by outing his name on Twitter? Why not having some compassion 
just talking it through. Like, what, what, why did you send me this? You ever thought that you're a repressed nudist? Just be nude. Just go out. Go to a nudist beach. Let it all hang. Be yourself. But just people out there, man. Just people out there. It's sad. All they want to do is be naked, but, you know, they have this fucking, you know, sheeple thinking. They have this mass thinking. They're too afraid of breaking the status quo because they're too afraid of, you know, of the tribe not accepting them for who they are. But who they are isn't what, you know, the standards that the bullshit tribe sets. And the only escape that they have is sending you a dick pic when they just want to be naked. Anyways, let me look for the... <laughs> such a dumb thing. <laughs> let me look for the inspirational quote of the week. But anyways, I have a segment on this podcast where I say an inspirational quote. I love inspirational quotes. They really help me get through my week. And the inspirational quote of the week <clears throat> You cannot change what you are, only what you do. Philip Pullman, The Golden Compass. This is a very beautiful quote. Again, you cannot change who you are. If you're a nudist, you're a nudist. You can only change what you do. So stop sending random chicks dick pics. They don't like it. They don't like it. Just be new, dude. Go to a beach. Let Go to the beach at night. Even, even if, there's not, if you don't have access to a nude beach, just go to the beach at night, dude. And just let the moonlight hit those beautiful, symmetrical, shiny balls. But anyways, that's the podcast, motherfuckers. We did it! We did it! Thank you very much for listening. I really appreciate anyone who's who's listening to these till the end. If you really enjoy the podcast, hey, reach out. I really love hearing from you guys. Okay, if you have any suggestions, if you have any topics that you would like to listen to, hey, I'm all ears but anyways motherfuckers that's the podcast share it with a friend i'll keep you motherfuckers posted oh by the way yeah follow me on instagram and on facebook all that information is on the episode notes or if you if you're watching on youtube and you're watching my beautiful mustache flap around in anger hey that's for you i'll keep you motherfuckers posted peace the fuck out